is Katie here, and it's time to talk about the winter finale of Shadowhunters. That winter finale though, oh my god, so much happened in this episode. I don't even know where to begin processing it. I don't have any notes on me because I've literally just seen the episode. So as always, I apologize if I forget to mention anything, but a lot happened. It was pretty epic, I would say. So this episode, let's start with the soul sword side of things, shall we? That seems like a good starting place. That's been sort of the main recurring storyline that's been going on throughout this half of the season. Valentine is holding Simon hostage, threatens to kill him in a horrible and painful way if Clary doesn't show up at the Institute to activate this soul sword. In this episode, Clary, Jace and Luke find Dot. They take her to Magnus's apartment where she tells them that there is a way to deactivate the sword. Magnus is shown this vision that Clary and Jace had and confirms that a Morganstern with demonic blood can deactivate the sword. Of course, Jace thinks that that is him because he's been led to believe by Valentine that he is, in fact, a Morganstern and that he does have demonic blood that has been injected into him. So even though deactivating this sword will kill him, he thinks that it's a great answer. But of course, we know that he doesn't really have demon blood. So I kind of spent the whole episode thinking, Jace, no! Please do not touch that sword! So with Simon being held hostage in the Institute and Valentine wandering around like he owns the place, Clary and Jace working with Luke and the other downworlders come up with a plan to get inside the Institute and stop Valentine. We see Clary come into the Institute and is taken to Simon who is bleeding out because Valentine has slit his throat. My poor suffering vampire son, honestly. He doesn't deserve this. What we think is Clary cuts herself and allows Simon to drink her blood. At first I thought they just changed the whole daylighter thing and made Simon drink blood from Clary instead of Jace. But then of course that good old shapeshift and rune, that happens again and turns out it's not Clary, it is actually Jace. So like I predicted last week, we got Simon drinking Jace's blood, and so begins his path to becoming a daylighter. Jace and Simon team up, take down a bunch of Valentine's henchmen. That's what I like to see, they're so great working together. They locate where the sword is in the Institute. It's guarded by a couple more of Valentine's men. They are waiting for backup before they try and get the sword. Only the actual Clary has been found and we see Valentine dragging her towards this sword. She's determined not to touch it, but you know, it's Valentine. He's gonna overpower her. He takes her towards it, but then of course, Simon quick fires in there, gets Clary away from the sword, and then we have Jace. Comes along to play the big hero. He knows that this sword will kill him if he touches it. Well, that's what he believes anyway. And despite Clary telling him not to do it, he does it. He goes and grabs the sword. And of course this was Valentine's plan all along because him touching the sword does not deactivate it. It makes everyone's worst nightmare come true and activates it. This is what Jace gets for trying to save the day. So a bunch of the downwelders that had agreed to help out in this mission, they'd ran into the Institute ready to attack just as Valentine got hold of the sword. And so he ended up taking out a massive bunch of them, including poor Alaric. I knew Alaric's time was limited anyway. He actually survived a lot longer than I expected him to, but this was the episode that finally did him in. Poor Alaric. So the soul sword's activated. The downworlders think that this was Jace's plan all along and that he's working with Valentine. They did warn Luke. They did say they'd be really pissed off if it didn't work. They put all their trust in this going well and it didn't go well. So Luke decides to go after Valentine himself. Valentine ends up stabbing him. So before Valentine manages to finish the job and actually kill Luke, Jace appears again. This is when the truth comes out, finally. Valentine tells Jace that he isn't his father. Jocelyn was never his mother, and Clary definitely isn't his sister, finally. I'm so happy. 
<laughs> That's out there now. Jace and Clary aren't related, thank the Lord. Jace obviously assumes that Valentine's just messing with him again, but Valentine's holding this all sword, so he can't lie. And that's how Jace knows that it is the truth. He continues fighting him. The sword goes flying off somewhere, and they end up physically brawling instead. I'm always down for a physical brawl. I like a good punch up in shows. Get rid of these swords and just punch the shit out of each other. Clary takes hold of the sword and receives a rune, which she then puts on the sword. Still unclear as to what that rune did. I'm assuming it deactivated it. I hope so anyway. After Jace gets Valentine unarmed down the floor, he goes to kill him, but Clary reminds him that the mortal cup is out there and that Valentine's the only one that knows where it is. So they can't kill him. I'd have just killed him, honestly. I mean, you know that he's not gonna stay prisoner. He's gonna get out at some point. These people never learn, do they? Just kill it when you have the chance, honestly. Whilst that is happening, somebody takes the soul sword. At the very end of the episode, we see someone walking off with the sword. I can only assume that's Sebastian. And I don't think Valentine planned this either because when they take Valentine back to the Institute and he has that little conversation with Victor and Victor asks him where the sword is. Valentine seems genuinely bewildered when he says that he has no idea. So I don't think this was planned. We'll see what goes on with that in season 2B anyway. So the soul sword is done with for now. It's still out there somewhere, probably with Sebastian. But it doesn't pose an immediate threat anymore. Valentine has been taken prisoner by the Institute. Like the Clave are gonna be able to hold him for long. I mean, he's Valentine. So let's backtrack and talk about everything else that happened in this episode away from the Soul Sword. I really want to talk about Raphael and Izzy. As I've said before, I wasn't a big fan of their relationship turning romantic in this season. However, we did get a really great scene from Raphael in this episode. Whilst he and Izzy are together, he tries to bite her, but she wants him to kiss her instead. And this is when Raphael opens up a little bit and says that he's never been interested in sex. I am so happy that the show put that out there. We finally have a confirmed asexual Raphael. Because in the books he never had a love interest at all and everyone assumed that he was asexual but Cassandra Clare never actually wrote that into the story. She never explicitly referenced it and I get really confused about that with the book character because I think Cassandra Clare said that it was just a head canon. I don't know whether she genuinely did confirm that he was asexual. I don't know, I'm a bit unclear on the facts with regards to that. But in my head he was always asexual and I really wish that that had been an actual thing in the books that was mentioned. In the show it got brought up. We actually got to hear Raphael say that he wasn't interested in sex. I'm so happy with that. Like honestly, I just... yes. Yes. The whole romantic Raphael and Izzy thing this season has not appealed to me at all, but I was living for that one scene. I hope that this is something that we get to explore later on in the show as well. Maybe Raphael can open up a bit more about it, because I don't know whether Izzy understood him. They didn't really have a conversation about it. I think she was just disappointed that he seemed to be more interested in biting her than actually being in a relationship with her. Even though he genuinely does care for her and has feelings for her that he doesn't usually have, he doesn't want the same relationship that Izzy obviously had in mind. When they meet again at the end of the episode, she basically says that she doesn't want anything else to do with him. I would like for them to have more of a conversation about it in season 2B. Maybe clear the air there, because I feel like the two of them just got muddled up in a really awkward storyline because of the Yin Fen. I still think they make a great team, and I'd love to see Raphael become more of a friend to Izzy, so I'm hoping that's something we'll get to eventually. I'm just so happy that 
Raphael told us all he did not give a shit about sex. That's my little asexual vampire son. So Izzy, she wasn't doing too great in this episode because she's trying to wean herself off this vampire venom. Raphael hides her phone when the text alerts start coming through from Alec about the Institute, but she does find it and goes to the Institute to get involved anyway. There's a scene with Alec and Victor on the roof where they get surrounded by four Valentine's people. They're about to start fighting them and you have Victor saying two against four and then Izzy just comes in with her whip slays all four of them beautifully. She's not even at her best and she can still take out all four of those people by herself. I love Isabel Lightwood so much. Surprisingly, I actually really enjoyed the scenes that we had between Alec and Victor in this episode. I think they're the only two that are actually left alive in the Institute. So they're sneaking around trying to get access to let the damn welders in that are coming to help. I especially enjoyed that conversation that we had between Alec and Victor on the roof where we got a bit of Victor's backstory where he spoke about this wolf that he fell in love with who eventually he had to kill. And that doesn't forgive anything that he's done and it doesn't excuse his behaviour in the slightest but I do like the we had some sort of a reason for why he thinks the way that he does. It's given more depth to his character. So it was a good bit of backstory that I wasn't really expecting from Victor, if I'm honest. I thought that maybe he'd just be killed and we'd see the last of him. So I'm kind of glad that we got that scene. I don't like the way that he said he learned that a shadow hunter should never fall in love with a damn welder. And you just got Alex standing there like, well, shit, I'm screwed. So whilst we're on the topic of that, let's talk about Malik, shall we? Wasn't this a really lovely episode for Malik at the end there? My babies are in love. So throughout this episode, Alec doesn't really know how Magnus is. And of course we know that when the Soul Sword is activated, a bunch of downworlders are killed. Alec doesn't know whether Magnus is safe or not. Magnus earlier on in the episode had this really lovely scene with Madzi. I'd already seen this clip because it was released last week, but I just thought that scene was so adorable because she might be a warlock that is capable of killing people and doing all these bad things that Valentine's forcing her to do but at the end of the day she's still just a child that is looking for her guardian so I really loved the way Magnus tried to reassure her he was just so lovely honestly oh he can't be any more perfect Whilst everything was going down at the end of the episode, he was actually getting Madzi out of the Institute and taking her to Katarina. That's why nobody had seen him. So at the end of the episode, we get this really lovely reunion between Magnus and Alec. We got a hug, guys. We got a hug. They hugged. I mean, we've had plenty of kisses by now. At this point, we've had a few. And that's all great and everything. But I love hugs. Nice soft little things like hugs, just cute coupley things. So yeah, I'm just really happy that they hugged. Alec tells Magnus how scared he was and that he'd never felt fear like that before because he didn't know how Magnus was. And he says, I love you. And Magnus says, I love you too. <laughs> I'm so happy he said, I love you too, because like for a little millisecond there, I shit my pants thinking that his eyes were gonna go wide and he was gonna be like, not yet. But thankfully that didn't happen. It was a mutual I love you. And then we got another hug. Blessed, honestly, so blessed. And I love how Alec said I love you after that conversation with Victor. Victor's like, Shadowhunters can't love damn welders. Alec's like, <laughs> Think again, pal. Think again. I am in love with this warlock, okay? So yeah, Malika in love. That's great. Woohoo! So other things in this episode. Simon is a daylighter now because of Jace's blood that he drank. At the end of the episode, when he has this kind of sweet moment with Alaric's corpse. It's, it's not sweet that Alaric is a corpse, obviously, but it's sweet the way Simon says that Laura gave him a hard time, but he's still sad about him being dead. I thought that was really cute. Then the sun starts coming in through the window and Simon originally like 
goes to jump back because he thinks he's gonna get burned and the sun does nothing to him. He ends up running outside with Clary, enjoying the sunlight and that was just such a pure scene. To see him happy and in the sun, that is what he deserves. My son in the sun. <sighs> Poor Jace though. I mean, he finally knows that Clary isn't actually his sister, so all those feelings that he had for her, they're okay again. They're not wrong. It's not illegal. He tells Alec about it, and when Alec asks what he's going to do, he says, I'm going to tell Clary. Of course, he goes to tell Clary the moment she and Simon are having a great time outside. And he just looked so heartbroken, the way he turned around and just left them to it. I feel sorry for him, I really do. So other things that I loved about this episode, the Downworld is coming together to try and help the cause. We got to see Melion again. Oh, I just, I love him, honestly. I know I shouldn't, but I do. We've only seen little scenes of him, but I just love his look in this season. He's just such a beautiful Seelie. Also, Maya agrees to work alongside Luke. After all the drama that went down last week, we had a conversation between Luke and Maya in this episode where Maya decided to put her trust in Luke. And I'm really glad that they showed her still having faith in him. Although she was pretty pissed off when that sword was activated. <laughs> so I really liked all the scenes with the Downworlders coming together. So yeah, that's all I can think of to talk about right now. That ending was bittersweet because it had its happy moments, but then it also had the sinister undertones as well. I am assuming it is Sebastian that's taken this sword. And I'm very excited to see how that unravels in 2B. They announced this week that it is going to be back on June 5th, I believe. So it's not that long to wait, it's only a few months. I'm so excited. Please do let me know all of your thoughts and feelings about this episode. Also, what are your predictions for 2B? What are you looking forward to seeing the most? Let me know all the things in the comments. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in June! That is when we will be reunited to discuss more Shadowhunter things and to meet Sebastian. That's going to be interesting. I will see you next time. Bye!